Okay, so let's move on to uh, let's move on to a different type of drawing. Uh, something with some more. All right, so now we're going to move on to a different drawing. Uh, it's the disc plate. Again, it's already drawn. You should know how to do this. I've created this as a sectional drawing, but you certainly could have just created it as a 2 view orthographic as well. And, uh, and this one has all circular features. So there are some linear measurements here and here, but everything else is circular in nature. So we're going to use a slightly different uh, type of annotation right here called an M liter, and we're going to utilize some M text too if we feel like we need to make it a little neater. When we're dimensioning circles, it's generally pretty pretty simple stuff. Circles always measured in diameter. Anything that's a round or not a complete circle, like an arc or a fillet, those are included as radii. So if you look at any of these objects that have circular features, if it's a hole, for instance, this one has two holes, one there, one there, you'll notice it's, uh, it's done with the dimension symbol, which is the, the uh, O or zero with a line through it. But anything that's rounded but not a complete circle, like say the end of this object, you'll notice it's got R44. And then the end of this little piece right here, that's not a full circle, it's basically just a semicircle, um, that's also dimensioned with a radius over here at 32. And you'll find the same thing over here. This is not, you know, a full circle. This little half pipe gap here, um, that's measured as a radius, whereas all the bolt holes, uh, the bolt holes are measured as um, diameter. I would like you to include the diameter symbol. There is a shortcut for doing it, but you could also just Google it and copy the diameter symbol and then bring it over and paste it. Uh, both work fine. But there's something called an ASCII code that you can use um, the Alt key on your computer. I can't remember what key it is on your Mac, but it's probably, um, it's probably the option key, I would think. And uh, I'll just, uh, you can do ASCII, A-S-C-I-I, and then dimension symbol. And that should pop up. That should pop up the, uh, you know, enough information to find it. So here we go. It's a, it's a small letter O with a stroke through it. It's right there. So I could just grab that and copy it and paste it. Um, or you can hold the Alt key and type 0216. And by doing that, it'll actually include uh, it'll actually include the that feature. So let's go to our M leader. Let's pick this first outer uh, circle here because that's the important one. And oops, don't do it on my center line. I have been using con three. And I'll go. If you go to the annotate tool and you pick a circle, okay, it gives you a measurement like this where it's kind of on an angle and it goes. You know, these ones will have to go into your object to some degree because oftentimes you're pointing at circles inside another circular object. What it does by default is it indicates that there is uh, there is a, a diameter here, so it starts there, arrowhead to other arrowhead, and then you've got a dimension. It automatically puts that dimension symbol in, or the, uh, sorry, the diameter symbol in, but it's on an angle. So I, I, you know, again, it's acceptable, but I prefer to use these M liters and just hit the edge of the circle wherever I can. And then what it does is it allows you to, to, to draw the arrow, okay, and you can move the arrow anywhere you want. So I would maybe put that somewhere away from the center line. And then you can just type text up here and it'll be horizontally integrated or horizontal in nature. So it's not on an angle. I think it's easier to read. So you just grab the M text and then you just stick it above there make sure it's readable and that you're using a consistent font. And then what I would do here is I would type in the diameter symbol and then whatever the diameter measurement of that hole is. And if you forget what the dimension of that hole is, like I just did, <laughs> you can just go down to your dimension tool again and just mouse over it and you see, oh, okay, that's a diameter 26. So I'm gonna go back, grab my text tool, put the text up here, and it's diameter 26. Okay, so I wanna include that diameter sign. I copied it already so I can paste it, oops website. So I could go grab this guy right here, copy it, bring it over, paste it, you'll notice it's there, or it was, I believe, Alt-2016, nope, Alt-2106, nope, that's the alpha symbol, look at that, memory failing again. Uh, let's go there, what was it, Alt-0216. Alt key 0216, and it's not 
Of course it's not doing it. Maybe I got a bad ASCII dimension there. So let's just have a look down here. Well, I tested this the other day and it worked fine, so I'm not sure what's going on now. So that is Alt and 0216. Uh, let me just try another one, make sure the Alt uh, ASCII is working. Alt uh, 0177 should be that symbol, so Alt 0177. Yeah, that one seems to be working. Alt 021 seems to be working. 0216 does not. Oh, there it is. Okay, it is working. It was just taking a while. So there's my diameter symbol. Um, you can put a space. Um, oftentimes you don't. And this was uh, 26. I've forgotten again already. And back to our original drawing here. And it is. This one right here, the, the, the disc plate. So the circles or the holes are diameter 26. So that would be diameter 26. And then you might have to play with the text height a little bit. I'll just try five and see what that looks like. Uh, that looks actually just about perfect. Okay, so it's easy to see. The only other thing you might do is just increase that arrow a little bit, just to give you a little bit more space under the diameter 26. You can always move the you can always move the letters too. Uh, you know, it's just text on top of the dimensions. So, you know, space it out so that it, so that it's pretty and easy to read. Okay, so there's a diameter of 26. And now I could just I haven't exploded this, so I could just copy that, and I can uh, I can bring that to other features as well. So maybe I want to bring it to this larger circle and. Uh, Maybe I want to make it just a little bit higher, just get it separated from that other dimension. And what is the dimension of this larger uh, area? It is uh, diameter 198. So you can see they use a similar style as me in this one. Um, instead of putting it on top of the line, they just put it out in front, but either or is acceptable. Make sure it's pointing to the outside. Dimension 198. I can just grab this text feature, say copy CO, grab it, put it up there. Did I not copy that? CO, copy, from here to there, try to place it somewhat similarly, and then this one is, the dimension is diameter 198, 198, so by uh, copying dimensions I don't have to keep playing around with the, I don't need to keep playing around with the, um, Uh, uh, with the font size, I could just if I can grab that arrow. It'll copy whatever you have down here, so, so you don't have to play with it anymore. So that's one of the benefits of copying. All right, so I could grab uh, I can grab this one as well. You'll note that that di diameter right here is the same as this linear measurement here. Here, and sometimes you will see that, but I generally prefer to have all of my um, all of my circular references uh, on the front view. I think people. It's a bit more intuitive for people to look at the front of a circle and say, okay, diameter, diameter. And then if it's a circular feature that's not an actual completed circle, then radius. I think people are used to sort of seeing them on the front view. Um, so I would, be, uh, I would be perfectly comfortable grabbing that entire dimension again, copying it. And I'll copy it from the tip of the arrow. I will copy it to this circle somewhere sort of out of the way. I don't want it that close to the edge of my object, so I'm just going to grab it and pull it out a little bit and grab my text and move that text over Oops. move it over and up and what you, whenever you're doing this just make sure that you make sure that you remember to change your dimensions so do you think it looks better up there or do you think it looks better there i think it looks better there actually so instead of doing this again part of the art of it not necessarily a hard and fast rule, but yeah, I think that looks better, to be honest with you. So I'll choose that method. And uh, again, make sure you change after you copy. So this piece right here, that is the outside of the nose, which is dia diameter 102. Put the in there, change that diameter to 102. 
I guess another benefit of putting it there is you don't have to mess with the length of those meter lines. Now, I said in general, you do not, you do not dimension hidden lines. However, if those hidden lines are necessary for including the placement of holes and other features, you would dimension the hidden lines. So you're only generally going to see that on circular objects. And if we look at the way that they've dimensioned this, you'll notice they've got a 142BC. We know that means uh, bolt center, so that line is used to show where these four holes go. So that's a good line to dimension. I don't think we're going to... Eh, should we dimension that gap? Let's start with the bolt center. So the bolt center, um, the bolt center is a line that would typically go through there, and you would include it as a uh, center line feature because it is marking the center of the holes. So you'd want to make it a circle, but you want to have like the long dash, short dash convention. So that's what I have on my CTR line. Okay, so I'm dimensioning it just like I would any other center feature. I am just going to uh, use a circle instead of instead of a, a line. Uh, 142. Okay, so this is the diameter of D space 142 space. And because that is a center mark, it is different than these hidden lines here. These two hidden circles, hidden line circles, represent the inner bore. So they're not really measuring a center point. They're showing you these features, whereas this BC line is showing you the center of the circles. Now look at the way that it crosses over the object and grabs, you know, sort of interferes with these lines. So if I was going to include this bolt circle, which I think I will, because I think it helps the drawing, um, I am going to have to modify these ones. So I will, um, I will actually delete those completely. Uh, because this bolt circle will show me the center of each one of those holes, and then I should probably have some vertical markers for that. Okay, now we can do that pretty easily with extending this, or we can draw our own. Um, I have this measurement up here, this dimension, right at the top of the object, so if I extend this center line um, too much outside here, it's going to interfere with this. So I think I'm just going to grab my center, grab a line, and just do what we've normally done. I'm going to put that line up there, and then I'll just mirror it down. So I will MI mirror that down. Okay, so, whoop, and did my normal mirror mistake where I forgot to hit the space bar. So that's MI, bring this line down, click, and then space bar, there we go. So that should give me enough information without making it too cluttered, I'll grab Grab both of those little line chunks that I just made. If you want to select multiple items, I don't know if I've mentioned this before, hold down the shift key and then anything that you surround or click on will be included. Okay, so I'm going to copy that line there and I'm going to bring it down. And because I want the exact same line length, I'm actually just going to copy it here. And then what I'm going to do is going to rotate it. So actually, I should probably do it out here. It might make more sense, less cluttered. So I'll grab that one and I'll type RO to rotate. And then I'll go to the center and then I'll just rotate it that it's horizontal, then I will grab it, copy it, it's probably easier. I'll copy it from the center to the center, and then to the center over here. Okay, now this is a little picky, but you notice how this looks a little weird with because you've got the long dash, short dash thing. Um, you could adjust that by going to the bolt circle, and then going to the properties and changing the line type scale up or down um, to make to make those spaces a little different. Um, that appears to have helped on this side, but didn't help on that side. So um, this is maybe getting a little bit too, uh, a little too crazy with it. But um, if you feel like playing around with it to get it kind of just right, go for it. I think there's not much I can do about that one. So I'm just going to leave it. And it also is happening up there, I notice. But again, not much you can do about that. Sometimes you just kind of have to go with what the limitations of the program are. I said I was going to dimension this bolt circle, and uh, I'm doing that because they've done it on this feature right here. They've indicated that's a 142 bolt center, and when you've got holes, again, it's probably a measurement that will help your end viewer. So I'll go back and I will dimension that the same way I've dimensioned the others. So I'll just copy that. 
make sure it is in an appropriate place. Don't want to have them too cluttered, so. Something, you know, there-ish is probably fine. All right, and then the bolt center was 17142. So I'll just put that text. Dimension is diameter 142. So that takes care of that. I do need to indicate that there are several holes, so four holes. So this is where this is, so the d diameter of each of the holes, and then indicate how many there are. So let's grab this. Another benefit of using the M text is you can type in whatever you want. So it doesn't just have to be measurements. I'll copy that measurement, and where am I going to put this? Um, again, just try to line it up somewhere that uh, it may, you know gives the user enough information, doesn't clutter it. So I'll go to this circle for my representation, and then I will just uh, stretch out these lines a little bit, move that dimension away, make sure that this line stretches out a bit more, I'll get it outside of my object, that's probably good, move my text back to somewhat centered on that line. Alright, now uh, these are 26 and there are four of them, so Again, full circles, keep the diameter sign. And because we're using the M-Text feature, we can type whatever we want. So 26, and then a dash is fine. And just make sure it's all capital letters, so that is four holes. Four. Okay, so there's your 26, four holes. Seems to be quite a lot of space on in that version there. Maybe I'll bring it back a little bit. Okay, got to play with it a bit. There you go. that you could get rid of the space. That, that's probably acceptable. Now is it too close to this? Yeah, it might be actually. So again, okay, just play with it, right? Maybe it's maybe it makes more sense to have it down here. Keep it out of the way of the other one, perhaps. One of those judgment calls. All right, now, on the, uh, what else do I need to dimension? I've got the outside, I've got the bolt circle, I've got the circles handled. I've got these hidden lines, which I'm not going to dimension here. Um, this center bore, I have not dimensioned. And this might be another one where it makes sense to do it on the front view, as long as we don't feel like we're getting too cluttered. Okay, so I'll grab that, I'll copy it again. There's a lot of circles on this one, so we are going to have a lot of circular measurements or circular dimensions. I think that'll be okay. I'm just going to make sure it's outside of the object. Grab both of those and move them here. Hopefully not cluttering our drawing unnecessarily. And that is a diameter of uh, 38 for that inner bore hole. Eight. All right, so we've got outer bore, inner bore, and then the only thing we haven't dimensioned is those uh, those two slots, and we can view that on this view. So we've got this height measurement, which is the 98. We've got this measurement. What we don't have is that gap right there. Now, we could have measured it on and, uh, and dimensioned it on the hidden line. Again, not a fan of dimensioning hidden lines, so this view might be a better place to do it. Except it's not going to be a diameter on this end view. It's going to be a linear measurement. Okay, so we're going to indicate this okay, by noting how long this section is and then also how deep it goes. And the depth of this is probably best suited with just a, um, just with just a regular leader line pointing to the gap. including in the text, M text, and then including in the text, I believe our size was five, um, slot, you could say slot, nine, DP for deep. Lined up the same way as the others. Now I do have to dimension, I 
do have to dimension the length of this. So the length of this slot, I could combine conceivably with this. Let me just check what they've done on this view. They've probably given a diameter for this. Um, they've noted it because it's not because this is not an orthographic view. You notice it's kind of uh, on an angle. They've just got it measured uh, up there with the linear measurement, and then they said slot nine deep, and it's kind of out in the middle of nowhere. It's best if you have it somewhere close to um, to the actual um, slot. I don't want to clutter it by including a linear dimension up there in the same place. So, um, so it might not be perfect. I think maybe down here might be a better place to do that. Okay. Now, while I'm down here looking at these linear dimensions, I don't know how far it is from the front of the object to the back of the object from any of the front information. So that is something I'm definitely going to have to include here. So I might as well do that first. I'll start... I want to put it on top or bottom? Bottom, because I think I don't want to run into that. So I'll start going from the very back of the object, find that point, to just to help me trace it straight down. So it's a weird measurement, which is unfortunate, 154.38. Uh, must have been something there, I can't be right. 153, that's better. Okay, so I'll bring that down a little bit. All right, so I've got the entire length of the object, and then I'm going to have to do a few more, right, because I need to have some indication of where this, what that chunk is, which is 32. And then I also need to know how far is it from here to there. So that is... I must have missed it. 61.97 doesn't seem right. Okay. So you got to zoom in to there. And then it should be a little guideline that I can follow straight down. Yeah, there you go. And what do I get? 63.5 is the measurement. Ah, just missed it. We're good with my mouse hand today. All right, grab that. Well, maybe quicker is better. Yeah, there we go, quicker. There it is right there. 63.5, perfectly lined up with 32. At least it was before I clicked. Okay, there we go. And again, just to be consistent, don't like that comma. Going to explode that dimension. Double click on the text. I'm going to change that comma to a decimal. If anyone figures out, by the way, to change that uh, in a default setting, please let me know because I have not been able to find it. And then we need to note that this gap is 19. I can do it here, but it's a little bit far away. Even this 63 is a little far away. I just like it lined up with the 32. Um, I think what I might do on this one, again, more art than the science of it. So I could grab this and bring it all the way down to here. Does that look good? Let's find out. Okay, my dimension lines do run up to the object. That's not bad, actually, I don't mind that. Wherever possible, I like these ones aligned, so I like to have them in, in one straight line. And uh, in generally, I think that's better. Okay, so I've got some linear dimensions here. I've got this, I've got the entire length of the object, I've got this chunk, I've got that chunk, I've got this chunk, and I can figure this out by simple subtraction from these. And I've got all my vertical measurements should be fine. Um, I don't need to know the distance between here and there, or here and there, because that's indicated with the bolt circle, a combination of the bolt circle and of the size of the hole. So that's something that does not need to be dimensioned. The only thing that I think we are missing is these two hidden lines, which indicate both the slot, which I have taken care of, and then the second hidden line is where this hole, um, the bore, the, the hole that's running through the middle of the object, it does get a little wider at the end. And you can't see it on the front view. That's why it's a hidden line. It's this one. So I'm going to represent that just with a, a linear measurement right here and try to put it in a place that doesn't clutter things too much. So that's from here to here to indicate what that gap expands to or what that bore expands to before it goes out the back of the object. And that is 56, just going to check my drawing here. 
and that was, oh, that should be 70 by 63.5 depth. Okay, so I do need this measurement as well. So that's the depth, um, but it looks like for some reason I've got this incorrect. So that says 56 in here, it says 70. It's actually my object lines that are incorrect. And let me check this one here. Is this one 70? Uh, diameter 84, super weird. Is this one? This one's 72. Something's not lined up right here, unless I looked at the wrong thing. 72, what's that? Uh, what's 72? Nothing 72. Maybe I typed in 72 instead of 70. Maybe that was my error. And then what's this one? 84. What's the 84 for? Oh, the 84 is for the, for the top of the slot. Okay, so this one here was slightly incorrect. I put it as 70. It was supposed to be 74. Back to my hidden line, grab that, and then that was diameter 70. And I typed in something incorrect there. Diameter 70. Okay, there we go. So now that's the correct line. I, if you'll excuse me, I'm just going to run a quick couple quick con lines from, from that feature. Uh, just to indicate where I kind of messed up on the back part here. Mm, that's the wrong one. And you'll notice my dashed uh, line spaces are different now because um, I had adjusted them before. So this one is at scale, line type scale 15, and this one is at line scale 2. So I'll just change that to 15 so it matches the other one. And then again, just because I messed up mention or this feature earlier just going to run it across so that I can fix my object see just missed it should be zero there should be there and then I'll mirror that down Looks like it's on an angle, doesn't it? But maybe it's not there. Yeah. No, I think it's just kind of an optical illusion. Okay, which means my cross hatching has to be redone. And then the only major change is this line here, this line here, this gap opens up too. There. And I've got a couple different line chunks here. So I'm just going to read that so I can make it one big line. And then I've got to change it so that that goes out the front of my object, or at the back of my object, sorry. From there to there. And from there to there. Okay, which means that now my object is correct. Where are those? And this dimension, if I redo it, should be appropriate. Con three, annotate there and there. Okay, so 69.46, clearly not correct, should be 70. So I must have a slight angle on one of those lines, which I very well might have. 69.46. Okay, so one of these lines is not quite right. Oh, there it is right there. You can see how I accidentally put a bit of an angle on this one. You just got to be super careful. And that was likely my cause of that weird decimal annotation. Should be 70 now. Nine point nine nine again should be perfect. So what is going on here? I think I'm not trusting these blue lines. I think I've decided that there might be a slight angle on one of those. So I'm just gonna get rid of those and we'll figure out from here. 
just double check that this is indeed diameter 70. It is. Draw a quick con line. I think maybe I didn't get it dead center up there. I'll just do an X line. Make my life easier. So there's a vertical. And then I will snap some horizontals there. And there. That should give me 70 on the nose. That seems a lot different, doesn't it? All right, well, let's find out. Straight down around here should be 70. It is. Okay, great. So now I can be confident that that linear measurement would be 70, not 69 point something weird. It's like annotating your drawings is a good way to find out any minor errors that you might have made, like the one I just made. There we go. Now you see how it's 70. Okay, now I've got a bit of a choice here. I have to indicate that this slot goes 63 deep into my object. Um, I could do it here, but I don't like putting dimension lines inside my object, so I don't really like that. I feel like that's kind of too far away from it. So um, this is one where you kind of got to make a judgment call. And I think what I might do here is actually totally change this one. So if I, if I explode it, um, I think maybe I'll get rid of that 70 there. And then I'll just include manual text beside it in a fashion similar to what we did before at 5, and then I will say 70, and then I'll put a dash, and then I'll put 63.5 DP, or deep. And that will give me both pieces of information that I need for this object. And let's kind of line it up a little better. Now, if that looks confusing, the 70 dash, 63.5, Five, and I think it might, I would, uh, I, I might want to put that on a separate line and maybe include the depth inside brackets or something like that. Might make it a little bit less likely that someone accidentally makes this one 63.5 instead of the depth 63.5. And I mean, you can just play with spacing to make sure that it, that it looks the way you want it to look. I don't think that helped at all, so I'm just bring it back. Okay, so that's probably the best we're going to do there. That indicates the that gap as well as the depth. Um, this one right here is indicated by an actual uh, dimension right there. And then the length of this we don't need because we have it indicated by this 63 depth. And then thus, this measurement from here to here can be easily figured out. It's just going to be either 153 minus the 63.5 will give you that. Could extend this dimension line a little bit more so it gets closer to the object. But that, uh, again, that's a judgment call. Okay, so what have we got here? Okay, have I given all the required measurements and not overly cluttered the drawing? I think we're okay. I think we're okay. Some of these measurements are, are you know, a bit far away from the things they're measuring. And I did that because I prefer linear and aligned with other measurements. But I look at it a bit more and I'm thinking to myself, you know what, this one might actually might actually look better if I drag it up to the same spot as the other one. Did I explode that measurement? I clearly did to get rid of that decimal as he talks to himself. So I'm going to bring everything straight up. Creating arrows. Probably would have been simpler just to redo the entire dimension. So, because it, the, the downside with exploding something is once you once you kind of rip it apart, uh, 
it's uh, it, it stays apart, and then you gotta you know if you've got to change something like I did here, you actually have to go back and redo it. Bit of a pain, but I I, I still like having you know control over. So careful where you click. Zoom in lots if you can. So this should be 63.5. Is make sure I line it up with that one. It's good. And now I'll just explode this dimension and get rid of the text that I don't want. Explode. And then the one with the comma is the one I don't want. So that's this one, I believe. That's got the decimal. Okay, good. So I think that takes care of it. And uh, you know, relatively uncluttered, given how many dimensions there are on this. It's certainly it's certainly a bit more complicated than the other one. Um, I Do I need to know this right here? No, I don't, because I've got this, 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 and this. That can help me figure out that. I've got the slot depth. I think I've got everything covered here, so that would be, uh, you know, a completed and dimensioned drawing. That should give you enough information to do uh, a couple of them from the book, and then uh, there will be one, again, that is not in the book, so you don't really have a visual guide as to what dimensions you should include or where you should include them, and you're going to have to use your judgment on, on how to best dimension that object. As always, if you have any questions, please let me know.